Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin, and today we are back with our Nostalgia's Grind series, this time featuring the Tier 9 Fletcher. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you will enjoy your time here. I will start the video with an apology. I had to bypass the Tier 8 Benson, since I could not, for the love of me, gather a decent game with it, at least one worthy of a video. Thanks anyway for all of you who send their replays, but I'm afraid we'll have to sit the Tier 8s out of this one, unfortunately. On a side note, I'm also aware that I'm quite late on this series. It's time for us to catch up, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the details of the ship we are about to sail in. Being the ninth cheer on the branch, the Fletcher now represents in full strength what defines an American destroyer. Before we dwell on the technicals, this destroyer is one of my personal favorites and in my opinion, one of the strongest still in the game so far. She is equipped with five 127mm guns in a 5x1 configuration with a top firing range of 12.9km. Torpedoes now consist of 10 5.33mm tubes in a 2x5 configuration. Maximum range is 10.5km at a speed of 66 knots. Fletcher sits on 20,250 points of health and reaches a top speed of 36.5 knots. Her anti-air defense system is rated 43, her surface detection is 5.8 km and the armor thickness goes from 6 to 21 mm. For the modules I've installed, we have Main Armament Modification 1 Propulsion Modification 1 Aiming System Modification 1 Propulsion Modification 2 Concealment System Modification 1 and Torpedo Tubes Modification 3 For my commander Priority Target, Preventive Maintenance, Last Stand, AR, Superintendent, SE, and Concealment Expert. Pretty standard build if you ask me, but never change a winning team, right? When I said that Fletcher could be the allegory of what an American destroyer is, I meant it. Mix great concealment, great torpedoes, and dual purpose artillery, and you got yourself a nice, compact, agile and explosive package. But well, that's enough of these descriptions. Let's put some footage behind these words and take the Fletcher to battle. And here we are on the map Sea of Fortune, Domination Mode. We've got ourselves a southwest spawn, backed up by most of our cruisers, and we are heading towards Objective A. Now, bit of a disclaimer, this footage is around two months old, more or less, and some core gameplay elements and changes were not in full effect just yet. Regardless, I think this game is still actual when it comes to Fletcher's performance. We do have a slight comfort in the fact that no CVs are present in this game. Hell, I even took the luxury of mounting speed boost instead of defensive AA, and that is going to allow us to close up towards Alpha a bit faster. The matchmaking is also pretty good for us. We are top tier versus tier 7, but each team has their own tier 9 setting around, and that does not rhyme the way an easy fight. Behind us are a Hipper, a Buffalo, along with a Tippitz and an Izumo. As a close support, we'll also have our mass that is pushing Alpha with us, so I feel relatively confident heading straight into the cap that early in the game. Only two radars in the enemy team, a Cleveland and a Belfast, both very dangerous opponents considering their small detection range, but that's not going to deter us from playing the objective just yet. Two enemy battleships in sight on the horizon as well, North Carolina and Friedrich, escorted by a rune. Three spotting ribbons, I'll take it, and Mars and I are starting to capture the zone. Now, all the enemy ships in front of us are pushing straight towards the third line, and are most likely to use the island as cover in order to sail south. If the enemy armada decides to commit on that push, I will have to welcome them with a torpedo ambush, so it's time for me to head west. Mass encounters the Akatsuki, and we are not going to hesitate on opening fire. Even if I'm spotted, 
Not a single ship had an angle on me, so the timing is quite perfect. Now, the second I say that, of course, enemy Cleveland is revealed as a struggler and he does have line of sight. Nice aim on the Akatsuki. None of the first four salvos reached her. On the other hand, Cleveland is about to score a nasty hit, resetting a bunch of our capture points. Not the best trade so far. In the meantime, the mass laid down a smoke screen. I take cover in it for a short time, but I know Akatsuki torpedoes are about to come pouring. Looking at the minimap, three of our cruisers are breaking through Bravo, leaving us quite unprotected at Alpha, but at least they are securing the cap. Considering the range at which I'm detecting the Akatsuki, it is very tempting to engage and I will do so again. I'm trying to make her shoot once so I can smoke up and have her detected. But I need to be cautious since the rune and Friedrich are about to get line of sight. It could work as a bait for the enemy rune, so she could push down in my torpedo strike and get an angle on me, but then I realize Cleveland is not far behind and his radar might be an issue, so it is time to book it away. As soon as I have the chance, of course, I am going to be using my guns on every target I can shoot at. If I can set fires and force damage controls, it can work in our favor and plus, that is my goal as a gunboat destroyer to make my artillery sing. I am slowly maneuvering out while sustaining fire. I can still sit behind my smoke and remain undetected. It seems like the Frederick took a hard turn to evade my torpedoes but is still going to get nicked by one, causing a flood. Shortly after, what we expected happens. Cleveland is pushing south and we are just in range of its radar. Nothing too dangerous, we are showing a small profile and as soon as our speed boost is back up, we are getting the hell out of here. More torpedoes coming from the Akatsuki. She is not abandoning that flank just yet, but at least the Cleveland lost interest in shooting at us. Now that Cleveland, while smartly trying to use my smoke as cover, kind of caught himself stuck by the island behind him and has no choice but to travel back north if he wants to retreat from his push. That is going to allow us to deny that path with torpedoes and leave him with even less room to maneuver in. I was expecting him to start capturing Alpha, but he made the semi-wise decision of retreating, indeed, although our torpedoes are here to catch him. Knowing that, I instantly engage. Most of the time, cruisers will focus on shooting back at you rather than evading, and if they evade rather than shooting at you, well then you can keep shooting at them. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was a dumb sentence, wasn't it? but not as dumb as this Cleveland getting nicked by two of my torpedoes. While he did took evasive maneuvers, he also ran aground and nothing was able to spot him. Although friendly Indianapolis is going to activate his radar, lighting up the Cleveland once again for us to shoot at. I'm trying to get an angle and lob my shells right over the island. Cleveland is flat broadside and even at this range, AP can definitely do the trick. But after several attempts, the damage output is not enough and our friendly tippets is going to rob us of the first blood. In the same second though, our flint gets obliterated by the enemy Musashi, instantly balancing the kill counter. Not a big deal, our team is now in a solid lead. Two caps are secured, we have some control over the western part of the map, although C doesn't look too good. We do have some cleanup to do on our side before we can think of switching flanks though. Our friendly mass has been following my trail for some time now and is not really contributing that much. He could go and assist our three cruisers at Bravo, but I guess he's feeling safe following me around for now. Charlie is now owned by the enemy and it seems that most of our forces there is getting defeated. But that's not our main concern for now. I do plan on pushing straight north and try to come up behind the remaining enemy force at Alpha. Still, the Friedrich and the Rune are battling for the 1 and 2 line. I also know the Akatsuki is lurking around somewhere and I cannot allow her to capture Alpha back. Meanwhile though, Enemy North Carolina seems like a decent target for now. She understands that A might be a lost cause and is traveling back towards the east. 
Good day for us. We are in the perfect position for a strike and we are taking the opportunity to bypass her and flank the Friedrich at the same time. Mass still has my back, good. If Akatsuki comes up, we will be able to take care of her slightly faster, hopefully. But she is nowhere to be seen, not even a torpedo in sight. Talking about torpedoes though, straight lining North Carolina, not really aware of the pending destroyer threat around her, is about to eat some and four of them, that is. Enough to take her out in one satisfying strike. There it is, the first frag of the game, and we've dealt a decent 120,000 points of damage yet. Friedrich and Rune are now properly cut off by two destroyers, and I have freedom of movement throughout the entire northwest part of the map. Surprisingly, and what I like the most about this torpedo system, is that they are already reloaded and we are ready to strike again. I'm confident neither of these enemies have any idea of my location for now, but I have to remember that both of these also have a hydroacoustic. I'm holding on the strike to get a grasp on where the rune will be heading towards, but my main target being the Friedrich, I send them down range anyway. Now it is just a spotting duty for me. Most of our force on this flank are really shy on pushing forward. Our two battleships and our two cruisers still have not left their spawn area, but I can understand that they are playing defensive. Although, looking at the minimap again, two enemy destroyers have broke through the south of sea, and Bravo is slowly getting surrounded. In the meantime, our torpedoes are looking very good and even the rune is about to take one. I smoke up with the intent on opening fire. I realize the rune is engaged with our Izumo, so she will remain detected regardless of us smoking up or not. And as long as she does not close up to hydroacoustic range, there is little she can do to counter us now. Our torpedoes are also carrying over to the Friedrich, and we managed to finish off the German battleship, granting us the high caliber achievement in the process. Rune does pick up the hint though and tries to blind fire us, quite successfully actually, but I have to keep firing, I'm committed now. I've set the German cruiser on fire, and I quickly swap to AP to finish her off. Although she's technically in range of her torpedoes, so I might be forced to leave my smoke soon. Rune knows she is going down and tries her best to damage us. It's taking me a bit too long to deplete the remaining HP she has, since she's also healing on top of it, but we managed to get the kill while exiting our smoke. Instant 180. Minimap awareness had me ready to switch to the Musashi, and our torpedoes are online. We also got eyes on a pretty damaged Helena in gun range. Tough decisions coming up. Our team is holding up the line, but Bravo Cap is being turned over, we have to act for our kills and retake our grounds. Torpedoes in the water for Musashi, and I decide to engage Helena after all. With enough luck, we can take her out fast enough and clean up another good portion of the map. Now, that's a bit of a gambling, since Helena has a decent collection of 15 bloody guns, but she's throwing broadside and our AP is bound for the job. I'm trying to kill my speed and show as little profile as I can, but Helena still makes us pay in hit points before we finally manage to take her out. No time to rest, Musashi won't be able to maneuver fast enough to dodge the bulk of our torpedoes, but our mistake here is to keep shooting. Call it greed if you'd like, but I could have definitely tried and reconciled, preventing what's about to happen. Musashi does take our torpedoes, enough to flood him out and grant us confederate along with our kraken and leeched, but in her dying volley, Musashi hits us hard and sets a fire we cannot repair. We'll live, but most of our hit points will be gone by the time that fire is out. Okay, the main fight is out of the way. We now need to safely retake what was lost and that's Bravo and Charlie. Although I am quite far away from the action, and two enemy destroyers still remain. 
I'm in no shape to fight any of them, and I'll have to resort to my teammate if they survive long enough in the first place. The next five minutes are solely going to be sailing back towards our objectives, so let me speed this up for you a bit. Our berserking tippets is lost at Bravo while pushing alone in the fog of war, and even if we're maintaining the lead on point, I'm starting to have doubts on whether we can win this or not. The closer the game, the better though, at least in my book, and as we set up to look out Bravo, the enemy Minsk is spotted. I cannot waste the occasion and instantly smoke up to engage, but we only have limited time before the Russian destroyer disappears again. And in the process, our buffalo trades with the second enemy Friedrich, and I'm left alone with our hipper. I do need the hipper to be safe, but at the same time, he also has to take some risks right now. The thing is, he's been extensively damaged as well, and to be honest, he could lose a gunfight with a destroyer. What has me worried the most though is that the last enemy cruiser standing is of course the dreaded Belfast and that has me kind of sweating. I decide to head over Charlie and try to contest it. Maybe the enemy force got carried away towards Alpha and I can at least try to keep our points going. But with only 4 minutes left on the counter, the odds of it happening are slim. No idea where the second destroyer could be. He was last seen towards Alpha, so I'm guessing he'll be heading there, and I am pre-firing torpedoes to hopefully catch either Belfast or Minsk. Our friendly hipper is still progressing behind us, and we do get eyes on the Minsk. Not a great time to engage with another gunboat, but we don't have a choice, he is close enough to spot us. Unfortunately, we don't get the kill with our guns, but our torpedoes are in the water. And the Minsk does take one. Good, good, good. Not that good, considering Alpha is now being turned over as well, and Belfast now knows my general location. Our Hipper is playing the safe way, I assume, sailing north and calling it a day. I can't possibly hope to kill that Belfast, but I'll sure try my best. Where could she attack us from, hey? Aggressively through Bravo? Could be. Safely south of sea, same odds. So pre fire torpedoes on both locations. But do you feel it? That chill down your spine? That sick sense of impending doom? I do, and it's terrifying. I am hopeless, alone, hurt, and exposed, hunted down by the most dangerous sharks out there. And there she is, in all her might and glory. Enemy Belfast instantly radars upon detection, of course, and to be fair, our torpedoes are looking quite close. We cut the engine and engage, trying to throw off our aim, but that's the Belfast we're talking about here. We barely miss our torpedoes, and Belfast finally puts an end to our sufferings. Such a shame. But the second we lost our tippets, I had the feeling that this would happen. Shortly after a heated gunfight with the remaining enemy destroyer, our hipper does get taken out, and we unfortunately get defeated. 239,000 points of damage dealt, over 5,000 XP earned, and almost half a million credits gained. We achieved Confederate, Devastating Strike, Kraken Unleashed and High Caliber, Landing 14 torpedoes, causing 9 floods and 4 fires, securing 2 caps and sinking 6 ships. Over 2000 base XP, not that much but actually clearing the top of the enemy team and more than doubling our top teammates. We've dealt considerable damage to most of our kills and tried to make use of all the tools Fletcher could give us, unfortunately to no avail. Well, people, that video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for sticking all the way through. I hope you've enjoyed your time, and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you did not, thumbs down then, but stay tuned anyway. As always, there is more content to come about World of Warships. I will try to come up with a decent gearing game for the last episode, but remember that you can still send me your replay over at thesettingrobin at gmail.com and who knows, get a feature on the channel. But that's me out. Until then, 
you have a good one and you take it easy.